Yeah, you may need to pull it out.
So, uh, I, uh, those were the uh, main announcements I had. Uh, anybody who would still like to be part of the community choir, the practice is at Thursday at 7 p.m. and it is over by 8. And we are still taking the uh, uh, hymns, anybody's favorite hymns, and we'd like you to put your favorite Christmas hymns on uh, a folder that Connie has. We check. Uh, Pastor, do you have any other announcements? The... Uh, the charge conference is next Sunday at 6 p.m. Okay, so that's... So however it's listed in the bulletin, it's November 3rd at 6 p.m. Right, and that'll be at Walnut Street United Methodist Church with the, dist invited. With the district superintendent speaking and everybody is invited. We're required to have a few people there. The pastor and I will certainly be there. Um, this uh, Wednesday, we've got the fall Bible study at 11 and choir practice at 7.15, followed by bell practice. Um, additionally, next Sunday, in addition to the charge conference being that evening, it's All Saints uh, Day um, that we're going to recognize that morning. So we'll uh, talk about all of the members of Tyler Church and the friends of Tyler Church that have uh, entered the afterlife. Um, that'll be next Sunday. And, of course, after that, we've got Veterans Day on the 10th of November that we'll be celebrating here, and the 18th of November, the Administrative Council meeting. Uh, looking toward the end of November, we'll hang the greens the uh, Sunday prior to Thanksgiving, because of the way the calendar works, so they'll be up for uh, first Sunday back. Okay, anything else? All right, so our uh, call to worship is uh, designed to uh, get everybody uh, excited today. So, choir, ready? Everybody, uh, 
I love seeing all the pumpkin faces and shirts and everything out here today. So, um, some of you may have heard the Christian pumpkin story through Facebook, if you're a big Facebook user like me. So, um, so today what I have is a pumpkin about that. A 10-year-old little girl was asked by another classmate, what is it like to be a Christian? The 10-year-old girl replied, it's like being a pumpkin. God picks, a, picks you out of a pumpkin patch. He brings you in, washes you all off, and then he carves your top off, carves you open the top, and he scoops out all the yucky stuff. Now, as you see, I did this early because you know it gets very sticky if you carve pumpkins. So you get all this yucky stuff that God calls yucky. You know, it's healthy for the animals in the woods, but all the yucky stuff of hate and greed and doubt, hopelessness, anything along those lines. He carves all that stuff out of you. And then when he's done t- taking all this yucky stuff out of you, he carves a smiley face. And now I've got a smiley face. I don't know if anybody can see. It's a little smiley face I did for this one. Of course, all of our faces look different. So he's got a nice smiley face, just like everybody else here has a nice smiley face. And then what he does is he takes the light of Christ and he puts that inside of you for you to share the light of Christ to everybody in the world. So remember, we're all out of God's pumpkin patch and he puts the light of Christ in us to share with everybody, so don't be afraid to share your light with the world. Oh, and if you didn't get one of these little plastic pumpkins on the way in, I I still have more here that you can grab after the service if you would like. Thank you. Okay, and this time we'll have our offering. And so uh, we've got a couple of uh, new ushers today because the fire's going to be busy. If you have a choir come up.
Okay, our scripture reading for this morning is from the Holy Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. And as you all know, uh, Mark is the second of the Gospels and describes the uh, birth and the life and the ministry of Jesus. Chapter 10, verse 56. Forty-six. Okay, that's why I couldn't find fifty-six. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is uh, the well-known uh, scripture parable of Jesus healing the blind Bartimaeus. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many of the people scolded him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Get up. He is calling you. So he threw off his cloak, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. Teacher, the blind man answered, I want to see again. Go, Jesus told him, your faith has made you well. At once, he was able to see and followed Jesus on the road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And we'll call the pastor forward. And sermon title today, very appropriately, It is Faith. At this point, the bulletin would probably just confuse me. I do give thanks for all of you that have uh, participated in finding something punkany. Uh, Bob said this was the first time he could remember having, does this need to stay on? You want it on or off? It's off. Well, I got to tell you, before we do the Lord's Prayer, this is the second pumpkin service I've ever done in my entire time in ministry, which started in 1989. And I've had all sorts of things that we've done to modify handing out treats to all the children and the adults, too, throughout the years. But this is the first time we did a, a pumpkin presentation, and Michelle was uh, kind enough and wanted to help, and she's got her sweatshirt that has Snoopy in the pumpkin patch, and that inspired me to say, we need to have a pumpkin Sunday. We have Circleville has a, what, a pumpkin week or a weekend? A week? A week. They do pumpkin stuff for a whole week. We're just going to do pumpkin stuff for today. So, this is my second pumpkin service ever. The first one was an hour ago at Springbank. <laughs> And we had, we had a lot of fun. And when we get together, it is about blind Bartimaeus crying out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. We are the people that cry out to Jesus. And we do ask for mercy. So, let us lift our voices together and pray the way Jesus 
taught his disciples long, long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Many of you that have been involved in farming or gardening through the years will realize that pumpkins and corn and squash and tomatoes were uh, put together by the horticultural genius of the ancient people, some of whom lived right here nearby, and some of whom were the Aztec and the Mayans and the, and the uh, Maya, Inca, Aztec, the, that bunch of people. Now, are all those people related? Well, according to the scientists, they're, they're all related. And the indigenous people that lived here before Columbus discovered this new world, and we call it Americas now. So in the Americas, pumpkin, squash, maize, which we call corn today, uh, tomatoes, were developed right here. Now, is that important? Well, the early settlers in New England used the pumpkin to uh, make it through the winter. And those ancient people did also. Uh, they all would dry the, the flesh of the pumpkin and then eat it later on uh, during the winter. Now, according to some of the timelines and carbon-14 dating of ancient peoples where they lived and the, and the pumpkin seeds, which are very nutritious, uh, I want the next time I buy a pumpkin, I want to know where to buy the one where the innards come in a plastic bag. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Michelle about that. So, my history with pumpkins is that we always painted the faces on them because in my family, we roasted the pumpkin in the oven uh, at some point and we used it to make pumpkin pie. I, uh, to this day, I have a Dutch oven that's from my uh, great-grandmother, Lulu Johnston, and I measure a pumpkin that'll fit in that Dutch oven so that when I roast my pumpkin for pumpkin soup in the oven, it's inside a, a Dutch oven. I do not recommend just sticking the pumpkin in the oven and roasting your pumpkin with the soup inside of it because they can fall apart and then the soup doesn't stay on the cookie tray. So it's kind of a mess. Do I enjoy pumpkin soup? Yes, I do. I usually make it once. It's, not, it's about that time of year when I make pumpkin soup. Now, maize, pumpkin, squash, the estimate is that those things were designed 5,500 5, BC, over 7,000 years ago, by those horticulture people that were very smart. Even to this day, do you think corn grows in the wild? How many of you think corn grows in the wild? Oh. Well, part of them already heard this. It doesn't. Corn exists because of people and because people are smart. The ancient people that lived here, they didn't use iron, but they didn't need iron. They had flint. And the flint is extremely well taken care of. 
Ancient people would roast the flint in a hot fire to temper the silicates that are in the, in the flint stone so it would make a better flint tool. And if you join the archaeology club with me out at Mountain City, you'll find out that we don't call anything an arrowhead. We call everything a flint point. Arrowheads are just little teeny tiny ones of the flint points. Yeah, little teeny tiny things. The bigger ones were all some kind of flint tool, a knife, a scraper, a spear tip, those sort of things. Now, oh, I almost forgot. I have, I have a quiz. Where were peppers developed? You know, don't you? Who knows where peppers were developed? The Americas, especially in Mexico. And the next one that I ask is, where were cucumbers developed? Who knows that one? Cucumbers came from Asia about 3,000 years ago. Were you going to guess that? No. no. <laughs> That's okay, Phoebe. That's, that, I, we don't know which came first, the people or the cucumbers. You're right. That is true. So, we've studied about pumpkins. The early settlers wouldn't have made it through the first few winters without pumpkins. When they took pumpkin seeds to Europe, there's a very important date, as far as I'm concerned. Actually, one of the more, more important dates of history. And I'm, I, I would only have to guess that Bob probably knows this. What was the date that the people in England developed pumpkin pie? Bob, you got it on the tip of your tongue, I can, I can tell. Uh, let's say it was December 25th, uh, 1530. A little early, uh, as far as the year. Actually, it was for Thanksgiving in 1675. You're close. <laughs> Blind Bartimaeus. We got a study about this guy. They're on the road to Jericho. That's about uh, 13 miles east, northeast of Jerusalem. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he's just kind of, well, he's walking. He didn't, he, didn't have a, he didn't have a stagecoach or a chariot. So as they travel, the disciples were near him. Now, I forgot my Bible. Luckily, it wasn't forgotten too far away. On the road to Jericho, we have, we have this story in chapter 10 of Mark. And it, it is about blind Bartimaeus, the son of, uh, son of Timaeus. He calls out to Jesus. Now, we've got to remind ourselves, he is blind, and the disciples are nearby, and when he cries out, it's disruptive, and the disciples, being very sensitive to the needs of Jesus, they want him to be quiet. Oh, they're, they're telling Bartimaeus, be quiet. He's, he's a beggar. He's, he's sitting. He has a cloak around him to stay warm. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he'd cry out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus heard this. And Jesus stopped and said to the disciples, Call him here. Those around Bartimaeus got him up and 
He said, take heart, get up. He is calling you. Jesus is calling. An important part of understanding who we are as disciples today is that we are called, Jesus is calling our names. Are we listening? I don't know. I hope we are. So, throwing off his cloak, Bartimaeus sprung up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus responded. Bartimaeus said to Jesus, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Bartimaeus immediately became a follower of Jesus. It was, of course, about the second miracle where Jesus heals the blind. When I think about the blind, we have to think about ourselves. We have to think about the disciples who were with Jesus. Had they recognized Jesus prophetically as the son of David? Bartimaeus is saying son of David about Jesus and prophetically announcing that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the King of glory. Today, we can challenge each other, sort of, and say, we can ask our own own hearts, have we recognized, have we relaxed enough to recognize that we too are blind and that we too should respond to Jesus calling out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crocheted pumpkins that I brought that are much lighter than regular pumpkins. You may have noticed that my pumpkins that Ellen made for me for this presentation are all wearing sunglasses. Did anybody notice that? Well, I want to encourage you to to follow my thinking here, is that the reason they're wearing sunglasses is not because they've turned Hollywood. They're blind. And that reminds me that I'm blind at times. I'm blind to the workings of Christ around us. I'm, I, perhaps I'm speaking mostly for myself. I can't speak for you. But in our blindness, we are a people of anxiety. We are a people of stress. We are a people that listen to the news about the war in Ukraine, about the war in the Middle East, about the plight of the people of Israel, which is important. It is very important, actually. And in our stress, in our anxiety, we have blinded ourselves, partially, to the healing of God's Holy Spirit that indwells each of us, that guides us, that inner strength. Bartimaeus had his eyes restored. And he had cried out because even in his impaired vision, he recognized Jesus as son of David a part of the kingship line of Israel. 
Now, we know today that it's because of his faith that he was healed. Jesus didn't make mud and rub his eyes. There's no, he just said, Jesus just said, your faith has made you well. Today, all of us, our faith will transform who we are. From being stressed out to being comfortable, to being uptight, to being joyous. We need to be a people filled with joy. Now, is wearing an orange tie and a, a funny shirt with pumpkins and smiley faces and all that, does that change who I am? Of course not. I'm still the same. We do need joy in our lives. We need to do some things that are different from time to time. And that's why I experimented with saying, let's have a pumpkin Sunday. And if you have a pumpkin shirt, you wear it. And I see so many fun pumpkin shirts. It's just, thank you. I really appreciate your participation. Now, I even see one pumpkin hat on Connie back there. And that's remarkable, Connie. I'm glad you have a pumpkin hat. She also has a pumpkin shirt. Does it have Woodstock and... The peanut skies on it. Ghost cats and jack o' lanterns. Ghost cats and jack o' lanterns. Oh, ghost cats and jack o' lanterns. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> yes. As we think about the lordship of our Savior we recognize that from time to time, all of us go through a time of blindness where we fill up our lives with all sorts of work, all sorts of stress, all sorts of things, uh, being flexible, being comfortable with where we're at and who we are. Phoebe's guitar, the battery didn't work right, so we had to change guitars. How many of you realized we had to do that until just now? Just a few. A few realized, oh no, the battery's dead. We are a people that are flexible in our hearts. We are a people that care about Ukraine and Israel and the people of the Middle East and all the war that's going on. And there's, war is, war is always a struggle. There's always people going to get hurt. There's going to be people get killed. There's going to be innocent people. There's going to be grandmas and babies that have nothing to do with combat. We need to be the people that pray. We need to be the people that are ready to help when there's a storm, like the two storms that went through the south in the last, last two weeks. We know that lives have been affected. We've sent UMCOR, and many of us have sent some funding to help UMCOR go and take and buy supplies to help people fix roofs and windows. And my experience with floods and high water has always been, we'd go through people's homes, throw away all their carpet. You throw away everything that got wet because it's not safe because of bacteria that might be in the floodwaters. You have to go around their home with a, with a, a utility knife and cut all the drywall about an inch and a half above the water line. And you pull all the drywall off. And you pull out all the nails that held the drywall. And you check all the outlets to make sure they're clean and not going to electrocute everybody with water in them. It's a lot of work. And that just has to be hauled off to the dump and thrown away. You don't want to even burn it because it's, it, you don't want to burn old nasty carpet. It, it smells bad. The carpet smells bad already and if you set it on fire, ugh. It's a lot of work. 
But our hearts lead us towards helping others as best we can. On prayer request, I request that we care for each other and think about who's having surgery coming up. Larry and Connie are have, going to have surgery coming up. Our dear friend Joyce, who's not well. Uh, Dave and Tammy, we're praying for you too. Every day. Because we care about others. Susan is so glad to have you back. She went away. Arizona? Missouri. Missouri. We're at Missouri. St. Louis. St. Louis. I've been there. I was raised in Springfield, Missouri. We have friends that we need to be in prayer for, that we care about. All of us know you need to get out and vote. That's about all I'm legally, that's about all I can say up here. Go vote. We include prayers to the family of Jane Graves. Oh, Jane, yes. Now, Speaking of people that have passed away, next Sunday is All Saints Day. W will we remember Jane? Yes, we recognize all people since last All Saints Day. Do you have that list? We're working on it. You're working on it, okay. So we'll take care of that next Sunday on All Saints, the first Sunday of November. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious Lord, we have gathered in your name. We have many burdens on our hearts. We remember that there are times when we're blind and we're thankful that the scales are washed away from our eyes and we see clearly this morning that our Jesus is the Messiah. Our Jesus is the Son of David, the King of glory. We give thanks Lord, for all you do in our lives. We give thanks for healing, for comfort, and for joy when we're stressed out. Lead us down roads of happiness, dear God. And as we continue to sing the songs of Zion and praise you, dear God, continue to bless all that we do for you. In Jesus' name, and God's people all said together, Amen. As the choir is uh, ready to come up for us, we'll have one more prayer for the pastor and I. The thing is, up to Sunday, as he and I get older, we lose more hair and have thicker glasses, we look more and more like him. <laughs> <laughs> the song we're going to do is kind of a lighthearted, uh, very uh, high spirit song. So uh, I wanted to uh, leave it off with that. So the choir is going to come forward, and we're going to really enjoy this song. You see, I Saw the Light by Hank Williams.
This is true Appalachian style. So when I was showing Nate the strings back there, since he's a guitar man, he said, well, true, true Appalachians would just, just be nice. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit of humor. We also said when we were practicing that this made us think of our good friend who we missed, Dick Tuttle, and so we'd like to dedicate this song to him and that. Yes. in Jesus' name. Keep us safe till next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here.